Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today we're checking out my top five best value Intel B360 motherboard picks. For this one, it's pretty simple. The boards must feature some form of VRM cooling to be considered. And of course, the price is very key here. Uh, spending over $100 US on a B360 motherboard is ill-advised. I strongly suggest you target something more like $80 US, unless there's some sort of special requirement. With that said, let's get to it. The ASRock B360M Pro 4 ticks more boxes than any other B360 board in my opinion, and I reckon most of you will agree with me on this one. It is really one of the best B360 motherboards available right now. As far as B360 pricing goes, the ASRock board offers great value, though at $85 US I had hoped these budget Intel Coffee Lake boards would be a little more competitively priced. In any case, what you get with the B360M Pro 4 is a well laid out motherboard with all the features you could really hope for at this price point. Uh, it also doesn't hurt that the board looks great as well. Uh, the board packs a solid VRM with premium 45 amp chokes on a high density glass fabric PCB. And as Rock advertises support for 95 watt processors, so it really shouldn't have an issue getting the most out of a Core i7-8700 for example. A bonus here that really should not be overlooked is the fact that the board packs four DIMM slots. And this makes future memory upgrades a lot more cost effective as you can just add more DDR4 modules. You also get decent audio and networking along with six SATA, six gigabit second ports and a pair of M.2 slots. Overall, the ASRock B360M Pro 4 is a great quality B360 motherboard that can't be beat at this price point. The ASUS TUF B360ME Gaming is another quality micro ATX B360 motherboard, though it does come up short in a few areas when compared to the ASRock model we just checked out. Uh, most notably of which is the lack of DIMM slots. You do just get two DIMMs, meaning upgrading from say 8GB to 16GB in the future will mean that you have to get rid of the 8GB you bought originally. In you got to sell that on the second hand market or whatever. It's just a bit more of a hassle, much more convenient to just be able to buy two more four gigabyte sticks to expand your memory capacity to 16 gigabytes that way. The board looks quite good. It's very gamerish and aggressive as you'd probably expect from an ASUS tough motherboard, but the layout does leave a bit to be desired. I would have preferred that ASUS leave enough room to better position the SATA ports than create that aggressive cutout looking type PCB edge. As it is, the SATA ports are just spread out all over the place, which yeah, is a bit disappointing, I feel. Still, with few good, well-priced B360 boards to choose from, the tough B360ME Gaming still manages to make the list despite those shortcomings. Overall, quality is good, making it a worthy alternative to the ASRock B360M Pro 4. Another alternative worth checking out if you can't get your hands on the ASRock board is the Gigabyte B360M D3H. A lot of B360M boards here are uh, priced at $80 US. It is a little cheaper than the two micro ATX boards we've already looked at. Like the ASUS model, this Gigabyte board does look very solid, though like the ASUS board, there are a few uh, interesting choices here as well. Uh, Gigabyte has decided to include a number of legacy items such as a PCI slot, that was a bit of a blast from the past and I haven't seen on a new motherboard for some time. Uh, and even more ancient is the parallel port header. Uh, for those of you that still have your printer from the 90s, this could come in very handy. Still, it's not just the classics that you'll find on this board. A Gigabyte has also included a USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type A port, though there is just a single one of those. And you also get an M.2 slot. That's pretty basic board, but it's also the cheapest B360 board that we've come across that features any form of VRM cooling. And this means it should be right to get the most out of a Core i7-8700, and it will certainly be the perfect pairing for a Core i5-8400. If you're after a full-sized ATX board, then there's just two cost-effective options to choose from in the B360 range, and they are the ASRock B360 Pro 4 and MSI B360A Pro. Both look very good, though the ASRock model is slightly cheaper and slightly better equipped, and therefore it gets my pick. As you might have expected, it's basically an ATX version of the micro ATX model that we've already looked at, and although the best value ATX board on the market 
you might as well just get the Micro ATX version. The stretched out ATX model costs $10 more and apart from a bit of extra PCB real estate and a bigger chipset heatsink, you really don't get much for that extra investment. In fact, there's only one extra PCIe times one slot and that's it. As I see it, the only reason you'd buy this version over the B360M Pro 4, that is the Micro ATX version, is because you have a standard ATX case and you want to fill that thing out. Our Micro ATX boards tend to look a little silly in mid towers. For those of you who want to build a compact little PC, you'll most likely be after something like a mini ITX motherboard, and right now that does limit you to less than half a dozen options. Uh, it's well worth noting that the Z370 mini ITX models start at $135 US, though most cost $170 to $180 US. That being the case, you can write off the ASUS ROG Strix B360i Gaming at $160 US. Tell them they're dreaming. Picking between the ASRock B360M ITX AC and MSI B360i Gaming Pro AC, it really wasn't that easy to be honest, and I could have justified going with the MSI model. Uh, it looks like the better board of the two, and it clearly offers a superior VRM cooling. But other than that, they are much the same, and with the ASRock board coming in around $20 US cheaper at the moment, it is hard to ignore that saving. If you can snag the MSI model for only five to ten dollars more uh, then it's probably the way i'd go but for twenty dollars us it really is hard to justify that added cost particularly given that these are b360 models uh, for 95 dollars us the asrock board offers a single pcie 3.0 times 16 slot uh, four sata ports four usb 3.0 ports at the rear uh, intel 802.11 ac wi-fi plus bluetooth 4.2 and you also get an ultra m.2 slot i can imagine this thing inside the silverstone SG13 with a Core i5-8400, and that's a nice cost-effective mini PC right there. I have to say, it seems absolutely crazy to me that so many B360 motherboards are priced over $100 US. Uh, with Z370 boards still available for that price, and there are a heap of them for around $120 US, you have to wonder why anyone would spend that kind of money on an inferior B360 board. For example, the MSI B360 Gaming Plus that I checked out on the launch day, uh, that costs $110 US. The Gigabyte B360 Aorus Gaming 3 and the ASRock B360 Gaming K4, they both cost $120 US. <laughs> Unbelievably, the ASUS ROG Strix B360F Gaming comes in at $135 US. Oh, and there is the B360H Gaming model for $155 US. So I suppose you get that if you're completely bonkers. It is worth noting that the cheapest models still cost $70 US and well, they do leave a lot to be desired. The $80 to $85 Micro ATX models featured in this video are really as good as it gets in my opinion. I recommend these motherboards for those of you buying something like a locked Core i5 processor, the 8400, 8500, even the 8600. Uh, but those of you picking up the $300 US Core i7-8700, you really should pony up the extra $20 or so for a Z370 board in my opinion. As for the H310 models, they're certainly better suited to Core i3 and lower parts, but honestly, with prices starting at $60 US, you really have to question why they even exist at all. Anyway, if you're after a good value B360 board, then I hope this video has helped narrow your search. As always, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe for more content. If you appreciate the work we do here at Harbour Unbox, then consider supporting us on Patreon. I'm your host, Steve. I'll see you again next time.